Got me sparking and rushing mad like inside the dark. Call me no snatcher. Just a brother for the rapture. I hang live, hold it on strong, hard to capture. Extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant. And I react like a con and start killing. It's manifesting. The gods work like appliances. Dealing in my cycle. I'm locked when it comes to Naruto and the board to air, there have been quite a few hot takes on the character that have ranged from head scratching to being outright wrong to some of them being valid. For every instance of people saying Hokage Naruto never had six pass stage mode in Boruto, which is false because we've literally seen him with toad slats and fox slits around the eyes and no thick orange pigment rings above the black outline of his eyes that stretch up to his eyebrows. We also have people who state that our favorite Hokage has regressed in ways that it doesn't make sense for his character. Boruto chapter 67 is now the source of controversy for some fans with fans stating that Naruto's nerf in this chapter is the latest line of disrespect for the character. Now, I flat out disagree with this line of thinking, and I think the characterization for Naruto right now is 100% on point for the character of Naruto, especially when we look at the anime original scenes from episodes like Boruto episode 220, the passing lines that we have in the Boruto manga, and the actual lore in the Naruto universe. I think Naruto's reaction to Boruto's death is one of the most human reactions to death that we've had in Shonen. Now, for some strange reason, people are upset that Naruto was so emotionally distraught over Boruto's death that his sage mode was deactivated. Now, I get it. Naruto is hyping himself up as he was rushing to the battlefield. He was claiming his new sage mode was better than ever before and that he could maintain it for longer periods now, which makes sense given he'd experienced using six pass sage mode before, which gives an ungodly amount of nature energy for the person to be able to utilize. However, Naruto breaking his sage mode despite the other two clones being back at his house and gathering nature energy for him makes a lot of sense and I'm going to prove to you why this is a beautiful moment right here. So too often in Shonen we see the fight or flight instinct on display and in particular we see the fight aspect of it. When Goku saw Krillin die he unlocked Super Saiyan or when you look at Naruto, Naruto snap when he saw he not to seemingly die in the pain arc, and he unleashed the nine tails as a result. However, what we've seen from Naruto here, a more mature Naruto, is a different side that we've seen in other shonen, in particular two classics that are very near and dear to my heart, Yu Yu Hakusho and Roroni Kenshin. In Yu Yu Hakusho, we saw the moment when Yusuke saw Toguro seemingly kill Kurobara right in front of him and we saw the rage of Yusuke but we also saw how the grief in that moment was so filled with sorrow that it became tangible for anyone who could sense Yusuke's spiritual energy as his limiters were being removed. In my personal favorite series of all time, Roroni Kenshin, when Kenshin's brother-in-law kills his new lover Karu, Kenshin is so overcome with shock and grief and self-loathing that he chains his sword up, the very sword that he swore to protect people with, and is determined to waste his life away in self-regret and loathing while waiting for death to befall him. Yusuke was a mixture of fight or flight. Kenshin was outright a case of flight in this instant. In both instances, the shock of what happened weighed down on the main character, and we see Naruto in that in-between phase. The trauma has affected his chakra, just as the trauma affected Yusuke's spiritual energy during what was a life or death battle, but because it was a life or death battle, Yusuke had to fight. There was no option for him. The trauma is what caused him to shut down, and the self-loathing has begun to fester inside of Naruto like it did with Kenshin. Kenshin's actions directly led to Karu's dead body being discovered by Kenshin, and Naruto's actions directly resulted in the death of his child. In each case, the main character was powerless to stop the events from happening, and just as Yusuke and Kenshin, the death that they witnessed wasn't what they actually thought they saw. Kurobara was alive, and Karu wasn't actually dead yet, at least. But Boruto was dead. There was a sense of finality at the time, but Momoshiki was able to convert the remaining 18% of his data to restore the destroyed heart and lungs of Boruto to revive him. Naruto being the co-main character of this part of the Boruto story, 
he was actually thrown a bone. But as we transition away from Naruto being the co-main character and towards Boruto being the sole main character from the Uzumaki family in this story, this was something that was needed because part one of the Boruto story is the story of Naruto and Boruto, is the story of father and son. And in particular, what makes this so beautiful is this is the story of a father who went from being the strongest person on the planet and was struggling with both of those roles of being Hokage as well as father to now trying to adjust to this new reality. And we see it in his attempts to try and save Boruto. Naruto had just tried to stop Kawaki from killing Boruto in the last chapter using Frog Kumite to move the chakra cube while he moved Boruto out the way of being crushed. He was screaming for Boruto and Kawaki to stop the plan for Kawaki to kill Boruto. And after seeing Boruto's lifeless body on the ground at the end of Boruto's chapter 66, Naruto was screaming Boruto's name off screen. In this chapter, we see Naruto's mental decline only speed up even more at a rapid rate as things are progressing. Naruto is constantly asking himself, is he in a bad dream? His mental state of mind is in absolute shambles. There isn't anything that he cares about in this moment, which is very fitting for a character like Naruto, who only knew loneliness as a child for so long that once he experienced unconditional love from somebody like Jiraiya, that when Jiraiya died, it led to Naruto walking the streets of Konoha in an utter daze and crying as he held a popsicle while he sat on the bench. The pain that Naruto feels right now is far worse than anything he felt with Jiraiya. It's more than Boruto being his flesh and blood, his firstborn child, but that's certainly part of it. I'm not downplaying the fact that Naruto and Hinata created Boruto one night during several moments of passion, or the fact that Naruto named his firstborn child after Neji, the person who gave his life to protect the future mother of Naruto's children. Which, as a reminder, Neji means screw and Boruto means bolt. The two are puns off of one another. Now, this death right here is different and it's for this reason. Naruto is in an emotionally vulnerable space right now. He's failed as a Hokage and he's failed as a father. As Hokage, he doesn't have the power to fight the threats that are on the battlefield right now. Code is strong enough to kill him and Amato warned we as the audience that this was going to be the case. When Kawaki asked if Naruto could defeat Code, Amato flat out stated things would not go the same as they did against Delta, who in the manga continuity did reasonably well against Six Pass Chakra Mode Naruto. However, Naruto knows that even if he went all out, he wouldn't be able to stop Code. Boroshiki, the fan made name for Boruto when Momoshiki manifests in his body, was now on the battlefield exerting power that very well might have surpassed Naruto's own power even in Sage Mode. However, what made this worse is that as a father, he lacked the power to impose his will on the situation and force an outcome where his son didn't have to be killed. Naruto was so helpless in this situation. Even if he wanted to stop Kawaki, he physically couldn't. Kawaki's power had grown too much and he was now effectively using the dojutsu abilities of Ishiki Otsutsuki which put the battle outside of Naruto's capacity to participate. Just as Jigen's limited usage of these powers was enough to body Naruto, the same thing would happen here. We have to remember, when Naruto fought against Ishiki Otsutsuki, Naruto needed Baryon Mode's insanely increased stats that also increased his visual prowess to the point where he could track the chakra rods with his eyes, not even something that Sasuke's Sharingan could do, but he also needed Baryon Mode to stop the chakra cubes that were summoned right there in the tracks. The best that Naruto could currently do was use Frog Kumite to move the cubes a few feet. Despite the promise he made to Boruto in episode 220 that when a parent needs to protect their child, they can call forth incredible strength. Naruto could seek out all the mental amps that he wanted, but none of that would give him enough power to prevent what happened, the death of a child who Naruto held in his arms and was screaming for him to wake up. It's because of this that Naruto's sage mode burned out because his chakra was out of line. Chakra is made up of your physical energy and your spiritual energy. Your spiritual energy is partially comprised of your mental and emotional state of mind. Naruto right now has been crushed to a level where the grief that he feels has left him unable to function. Naruto out of shock 
released the Sage Mode and likely due to the mental nerf released the Shadow Clone Jutsu as well. For Naruto, fighting wasn't something that mattered anymore. His child was dead. It is a natural reaction. Anyone who has lost someone who they love deeply knows that feeling of numbness that comes in the early stages of grief, where you're so overwhelmed with denial and you feel numb and your body feels heavy and cold at the same time. That feeling of betrayal by Naruto's body during the moment of vulnerability as he dealt with the trauma that came from losing his child. His emotions were on overdrive. The fight or flight instincts of Naruto, both as Hokage and as a parent, were at war with one another. The anger that comes from a loss like that hadn't fully settled in because of the shock and the finality of seeing your firstborn child with a hole in their stomach their heart destroyed and their lungs along with it. That feeling of not wanting to leave their side while struggling to comprehend how you failed your child as a parent and how you failed this shinobi as a Hokage. Can we really blame Naruto for his mental nerf during this time or for the abandonment of his ability to effectively use chakra? This is the same Naruto who when faced with the thought of losing his son had a panic attack in the anime. The entire world told him in episode 220 that as Hokage he needed to destroy his son. So soon after he lost Kurama and hadn't fully grieved the loss of the Biju that was sealed inside of him for 33 years of his life. But now everyone told him he needed to kill his firstborn child for the greater good of humanity and only a few weeks after that moment in the panic attack, depending on where you fall on the timeline, Naruto had to watch as his child was being destroyed by the child who Naruto adopted and who his own advisor warned him needed to be locked up. His decision as Hokage had seemingly cost him his firstborn child. I personally think that this moment is a very beautiful moment for Naruto because of how human it made him as a character. Now, I think this was beautiful, and I think fans are giving Naruto way too much crap right here. However, I want to know from you guys, what are you guys' thoughts about this? Let me know down in the comment section below, but as always, guys, like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.